just hope for the best. Oh, so. Jill, hold on. Excuse me, Ada. Jill, I want to talk to you about something. Uh, Mrs. Jacks, can I come inside and talk to you for a minute, please? didn't just want to borrow a bottle of milk, did you? I'll be seeing you, Mrs. Jacks. Oh, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Put the baby down here. <laughs> it's a little girl, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Her name's Kelly. I didn't mean to be rude to Mr. Carson. I just couldn't face talking to him. You know how it is sometimes. Yeah, I know how it is. I just left my baby in the hospital. Left her father with her. I couldn't stand that awful smell. You ever sat up all night with that awful smell choking you so that every time you breathe, you're thinking, she's not going to make it. She's going to die, and I'll never see her again. I'll never talk to her again. I sat up for Kelly. She almost had pneumonia the night we got here. Well, what are you doing lugging her around on a night like this, in the cold? I'll get her some more milk. No, thanks. So many of you kids think you know it all, don't you? You can have your fun and take your chances. Having a baby's a cinch, so why make such a big thing of it, hmm? Well, I'll tell you why. Because to some girls, having a baby is a big thing. What makes you think it isn't with me? Because I've seen you taking her up and down stairs on your back as though she were no more to you than a, an extra bag of groceries. Oh, you're taking it all in stride, so bold and so brave about it all, because you don't care enough. And each time I've thought to myself, if that was my Rita, she wouldn't treat her baby like that, because she's going to have to pay too big a price for it. And her baby's going to mean the world to her, and not just a, a bundle to sling on her back. You sound like my mother. She's an authority on everything, too. And she's a rotten mother. I wanted to call her tonight. I wanted to talk to her so badly. Well, I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I didn't, because you're all alike. You never listen to anything. You never listen to anything at all. You're so young and so pretty and so sure of yourself. Just like I used to be. I didn't want my baby. My guess is that you didn't want yours. Wrong guess. Then what are you trying to do to her? Why don't you put a tag around her neck? This baby was born out of wedlock. Who are you trying to punish, you or the baby? I know what's best for Kelly. You don't have to tell me. Oh, then why did you want to talk to me? Why did you want to talk to your mother so badly? <laughs> Babies grow up. I never got to know mine till... She was almost a grown woman. I never had much time for her until it was almost too late. But if she'd died on that operating table, I'd never have gotten over it. I'd never have forgiven myself. You know, it's a funny thing, the way the rottenest parents sometimes have kids that grow up to be so special. If you had a chance to do it again, if you had a chance to give her up to a good home, what would you have done? I'd want to see that she had all the things that I couldn't give her. You'd give her up? I'd try to. I'd come up with all the right reasons. But I'd be the loneliest woman in the world. <laughs> Forget what I said about your baby. If you love her, really love her, then what you've been and what you've done won't matter. <laughs> Kids can forgive a lot of things. And when you get to be my age, you'll know there's only one kind of love that counts. Oh, but I'm lucky. I'm going to get a second chance. And I'm going to be the best grandmother you ever saw. <laughs> Good night, you. Here. Take good care of her. Goodbye. And thank you. Oh, here, here. Come this way. Uh, 
Uh, just give me a moment with this. All right, go ahead. Take off your coat. No, thanks. I'm afraid I didn't understand you on the phone. I didn't want to go into detail on the phone. What's the girl's name? Jill Smith. And she implied? She didn't imply anything. She stated bluntly that the baby she held in her arms was Allison McKenzie's. Stephen, the problem of teenage girls tend to bore me. Pregnant, non-pregnant, pregnant, non-pregnant. Really, I've got a milder one. What do you know about your son Rodney's relationship with Allison? You're corrupt, you know. Totally corrupt. I don't suppose you ever discuss Allison with Rodney. You'd do anything to hurt him, wouldn't you? How close were they? What a way to hit back. What a foul way to hit back. I have a client, Miss Jill Smith, of upstate New York, New York City. All points south, west, and north. I'm trying to serve my client. You're trying to serve Stephen Cord. Think back. I know you've never been close to Rodney, but a casual remark, something you might have misinterpreted at the time? Nothing. Something Norman might have said? Nothing. You want me to go to Rodney now? To tell him you're spreading poison about him? You do whatever you like. But I wouldn't advise going to Rod. I'd sit tight if I were you. After all, if Rodney went to Betty with all kinds of responsibilities, now, that's not Martin Payton's idea of a Payton dynasty, is it? That's sort of a mixed-up dynasty. If your memory improves, call me. so late with this. That's all right. Did I ask for coffee? Well, I admit it was quite a while ago, but we ran out of coffee and, and couldn't find the maintenance man to let us in the supply room for more. And the coffee machine is empty except for hot chocolate and chicken soup. All right, listen, do you think I could get a sandwich out of that uh, cream of whatever it was that we had for... No. Listen, has Dr. Remick left for Boston yet? No, as far as I know, he's still in intensive care. No, he's not. He's on his way back to Boston. Thank you, nurse. Well, Johnny, what is that for you? Half a day, huh? Right. You don't think I'd get caught putting in the kind of hours you do, do you? What I wouldn't give to live the life of a specialist. You're a specialist. Yeah. How's she look? Good. It helps to be young. <laughs> yeah. I just ran into the young husband. He thanked me. That's good. Look, I appreciate all the time you spent with Rita. The years you've spent here have made you a sentimentalist. I realize you did it as a favor to me, and why can't I thank you? You already did, about 20 times. Yeah, yes, I did. Well, I was worried about her. I was... Uh... I was afraid up there she was going to lose the baby right in the middle of the operation. I know you were. John, what do you think the chances are that she can carry the baby for the full term? Mike, will you stop worrying? You saved her life, don't you understand that? If you hadn't called me or someone when you did, if she hadn't been operated on when she was... I know. What is it? It's Rita Harrington. fine. Suddenly she began having contractions. I'm going to take her into surgery. Mike? She has a mother and a father and a husband and a dream about a baby. No, it's a nightmare. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. All I want to know is, is it a boy or a girl? Try and understand. Not till you answer my questions. Where are you going now? 
back to the hospital for another big goodbye to your daughter, like the last one that almost cost her her life? There can be proof of that Kelly is Alice's child. And how would you go about doing that? By asking Alice's mother. Thank you.